All right, so thanks, Larry. Thanks for uh, inviting me. It's uh, very really exciting to be here. Uh, so, as Larry mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm a coach at Agile Sparks, uh, an organization in Israel that uh, actually the largest organization of its, uh, its kind in Israel uh, provides training, coaching, tr Agile transition services. So that's what, what I do for, uh, you know, for a living day by day. So simulations and stuff like that is kind of, you know, what I'm doing, you know, kind of a, more of a, kind of a, a sidekick. Uh, you guys may know uh, Yuval has, uh, has been a prominent figure in the, in the community and he's also from Agile Sparks. Uh, so uh, just a few words about Flower. Flower is a, is a web-based process simulation platform. So uh, uh, you guys have seen probably the Monte Carlo kind of simulations, uh, you know, in the, in, in the main conference room. So something kind of similar, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's web-based so you don't need to install anything and you can run a variety of, uh, of simulations model uh, you know, variety of processes. Uh, one thing that inspired me to actually uh, create such a simulation is, uh, is Get Kanban. Uh, are you guys familiar with, with uh, Get Kanban, the, the, uh, you know, the board game, the online version? No? Okay, so uh, those of you who don't, uh, who are not familiar, then you, can definitely, uh, you should definitely check it out. So when I, when I learned about Kanban the, fir the, the first time, about probably around, around uh, three years ago, in a course taught actually by, by Yuval, and I played the, the Get, Get Kanban game. Uh, uh, I thought it was really a great way to learn about Kanban. It's a, it's a game, and it's kind of a competition, and uh, you get to actually you know, play with the, uh, you know, the you know, learn about the, the basic mechanics of Kanban, and uh, I thought it was a great way to learn. Uh, and I've been using that also, you know, now when I'm teaching you know, about uh, Kanban agile you know, processes, uh, I'm using that, and it's, it always comes up as a, as a highlight of the training. Uh, that uh, get Kanban game. So I was thinking about uh, what can I do to take it to the next level because again, you know, get Kanban is about you know, the basic mechanics of, uh, you know, of Kanban, but you know, there's more to it, right? More to the process than just you know, basic mechanics. What about you know, uh, di the different policies? You know, can we check, can we learn about uh, you know, from, from a game, using a game, can we check you know, uh, what kind of impact those policies are? What, uh, what are the decisions that we make about policies have on you know, the, the outcome, profitability, and, and so on. So uh, that, that's on one is inspiration. The other one was uh, Flow. Now, if you guys are familiar with uh, Flow, the book by, uh, by uh, Don Reinerstein, uh, that book is actually uh, taking a, lo a look at uh, you know, economics th theory and operations theory and, uh, and statistics and combining those three to try to understand you know, the, basic, you know, the, the basic laws uh, the basic principles of, uh, of product management, of product development. I think that's a, that, that's a great book. And uh, unfortunately, you know, many people, you know, maybe not this group, but people that I'm working with don't necessarily, you know, invest the time to read books. So I was thinking about, you know, how can we make those, those principles more accessible by people actually, you know, playing with in, in kind of a game setting and, uh, and experiencing kind of firsthand those, uh, those principles. Uh, and uh, so Yuval helped me, helped me with that, and we had you know, many discussions about you know, different directions, the right way to model things, and uh, so uh, it's been a big help. Uh, just uh, so you know, uh, you guys probably know that uh, this is going to be kind of a game, so you're going to get to actually play with the simulator and to actually compete. So uh, just to uh, kind of introduce you really quickly to the, the simulator and how to use it, how to operate it, even though there's not a whole lot uh, you know, to it. Oops, fast forward. So the, base, the basic element there is the, the card, which represent, can represent a, a defect or a work item, a task, a user story, you know, call it whatever you want. And uh, again, those of you who are familiar with the, the, the Get Kanban game, as, uh, you, you guys probably uh, you know, know that, uh, that, that kind of format because it follows kind of a similar format. Uh, so you have, you know, the card name, which is kind of, kind of just, you know, kind of a number starting from one to, you know, however uh, many cards were running through the system. There are some indications, you know, this is, a, this is an indication that, that this particular card is an expedite, and that kind of paused, you know, uh, icon means that it's blocked, so waiting, you know, for something. Uh, and you can see that in this particular case, uh, uh, there, are, there are two different kind of, you know, stations for that card, development and testing. And you can see that uh, you know, those, those rounds, those kind of bullets, each represent one day of effort that is needed to complete this particular card. In this case, development has been completed. There are still two days of testing to, uh, to get it completed. 
Uh, another thing that, uh, that is interesting here is the, the actual value of the card. So, uh, you know, I can't remember exactly what uh, in the, the particular simulation we're going to be using, one, uh, what one dollar actually you know, represents, but, you know, that's definitely uh, a good indication of the value of the, the of you get from completing that card. Uh, and there, there are some statistics uh, at the bottom. So the date was added to the ready queue, uh, the date was done, and the cycle time, which is, you know, kind of the, the difference between the two. Uh, and then there's the board. So the board is where, you know, the, uh, you know, those cards kind of, you know, circulate. So, you know, going from the ready queue through development, through testing, and uh, I added kind of a, a regression testing queue for good measure. Uh, and going all the way to the down queue, that's where we actually, you know, get, you know, the, the value. Um, there are, you know, some charts at the top that you should definitely be using. So, you know, that's the kind of a control chart where you can see the cycle time. So every dot here, every point represents one item that was delivered on a particular day with a particular cycle time. You can see kind of a moving average. And there's also kind of a weekly PNL chart, a utilization chart of the both, you know, developers and testers and uh, CFD. So definitely you should be using those. And uh, another thing that uh, you should be definitely lo uh, looking at is the, uh, the bottom line, you know, profit or loss becomes red when you, you are losing money. In that case, it's, it's green. And you can see also kind of a trend which shows you in the last, I think, month whether you've been making or losing money. Uh, so, so that's the basic, uh, the basic board. And uh, so what are the knobs that you're going to be able to play with? Uh, there are a few. Uh, one of them is just the, the whip limits. You can see that there are whip limits on any, any one of the, of the queues. So in that case, you know, development queues has a whip limit uh, of 20, 20 items. And you can change that by clicking plus, and, uh, plus or minus. So that's one of the knobs. Uh, another knob, by clicking on the settings, you can actually set, uh, you know, modify the average size, the expected size of the work items in terms of effort. So that means that, uh, you know, for every work item that we generate, we kind of roll the dice uh, and get a number between two to ten days. That's going to be the effort for that, uh, that work item. And the last thing, the last knob in this particular version of the simulation is uh, uh, kind of a, a panic button to some extent, kind of, kind of a purge queues. Uh, which is uh, kind of cleaning actually all of the queues when you want to uh, start from scratch, all those queues uh, exclusive of the, uh, the done queues. Uh, so whatever you, you got done is, you know, just uh, uh, stays, you know, you, you, know, you still get credited for that. So kind of a drastic measure, and you'll decide for yourself if that's something that you want to use or not. Uh, so some instructions, uh, you need a laptop to, uh, to run that game. So uh, if you don't have one, actually, it's preferable for, uh, for you to, uh, to work in, in small groups, like uh, two to three, two, three people. So should be joining where, you know, a person that has a laptop. You can also use a tablet, but, uh, you know, I think that uh, the user experience is uh, to some extent reduced. So my recommendation is to go with a laptop if, if you have access to one. Uh, work in small groups again. Um, Flower, you'll see that as you load the simulator, it kind of builds up a scenario, drops you in a particular situation, and you have to continue from that point on. And uh, the kind of scenario that we are mimicking is that uh, you are a new project manager and uh, you get what I, what I refer to as the Midas talk. You get into your manager's office and he tells you we have, a, you know, our flagship software development project is kind of failing or struggling and uh, only you have the power, you know, to rescue it, to, uh, to turn the situation around. Uh, with you with your uh, kind of lean toolkits with all those, you know, magic incantations that you have, you know, Kanban, Kaizen, Hey Junka, you know, only you can do that. And, uh, and you know, unfortunately you accept that job. And uh, what you should be focusing on is on just, you know, improving the, the process. You'll, uh, again, you'll drop into a particular situation and try to improve that and actually to, uh, uh, to make as, as much money as you can. And uh, although I've been trying to model a situation, kind of a, a project, uh, which is very typical of the projects I'm seeing, you know, uh, we're not going to be focusing on whether, you know, the, the simulation itself or the model itself is, is realistic or not, even though I'm definitely open to getting input about that. It's more about, you know, the improvement process, okay? So, again, goal, make the most money. Uh, there's a prize, actually. So the first team that, uh, the team that gets, you know, the, the most uh, profit, gets a, you know, each team member gets a cocoon credit. I don't know if you, you guys know these gizmos. These are kind of, you know, organizers 
uh, with kind of, you know, rubber bands that can stick stuff in there and uh, to organize all your knickknacks. It's actually quite a, you know, quite useful uh, uh, kind of toy. Not life-changing, but definitely useful. That's something that I'm, that, that, uh, that I'm using, you know, and uh, it's, it's actually pretty cool. And you can actually, actually exchange that if you have already one of them, don't find a use for that. You can exchange those in, uh, in the Apple Store. So that's the first prize. For the second prize, and uh, I have some, uh, some shirts, some Agile Sparks uh, shirts, polo shirts, and sweatshirts. So that's kind of a consolation prize. Um, what I definitely recommend that you do as you start playing with the, uh, the simulation, first of all, before you, you, uh, you, you do anything, just look around, look at the queues, look at uh, the work items, look at the different charts, try to understand what is the situation, what are the bottlenecks, what are the challenges. Okay, so uh, do that before. And use the PDCA, right? Pray, what is it before? Well, you know the PDCA uh, cycle, right? So always try to, uh, to, first of all, understand what's the situation, decide uh, you know, what you're gonna do, do conduct kind of an experiment and uh, try, you know, my recommendation is to change only one thing at a time to see if it has, you know, the, the impact that, uh, that you're looking for. Uh, game ends on day 565. You know, the, the reason is that, uh, you know, it's, it's been, the system has been primed 200 days forward. 200, every day is a work day. So 200 work days, which is equivalent to about a year. And you get 365 days to turn the situation around. Uh, or at 4.33 p.m. because, uh, not, not for the, actually, yeah, pro, yeah, around that time because I want to, to have some time to, uh, to kind of debrief. So we're going to have to do that, you know, pretty fast. Uh, um, and that's it. So that's the, uh, yeah, question? So question. Um, you have the minimax effort. Um, yeah. That's actually for just for the development station, and actually the, the QA is actually a portion of that with some variation, as you'll find out. So the effort time doesn't include the QA days, or it does? In, in terms of settings, it, it does not. Okay. All right? All right, so, uh, and if you have any questions, you know, I can answer those, and uh, Yuval can help, so. Sure. Uh, you guys over there? So he has lost the least uh, amount of money, which is, uh, <laughs> right? So you reach the end, which is fine. But you didn't get to the end of the, uh, to the, end of the, the game, right? So uh, I'd like to, to quickly kind of, you know, debrief that and give you some information about how you can continue doing that, uh, you know, playing with the game. Uh, let's see. So, uh, first of all, what do you feel were the bottlenecks? Testing. 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 Very good. Testing was a major bottleneck. Actually, some of you actually asked me if you can move people from development to, uh, to testing. And uh, in the full version, you can. Here, I tried to actually create some obstacles, you know, kind of on purpose, and also lim limit the amount of, uh, you know, changes that you, can, uh, that you can perform, right? So, it was definitely kind of a handicap. Uh, any more, you know, bottlenecks that you guys bumped into? Defects. defects. Definitely defects. And people ask me, well, you know, I don't have control over defects. So it would be nice if you had a kind of a knob that lets you reduce defects. <laughs> it's not the way it works, unfortunately. So there, there, but you can, actually, you can. You know, one of the rules, you know, in, the, in, in flow, which makes a lot of sense, and, you know, uh, you know, that's, you know, based on experience as well, is that, you know, the shorter the cycle time, the less, you know, defects you have and the smaller it is built in, yeah? And the smaller the work items in terms of overall effort, the less defect. So that's, that's the way you could, you know, affect the, that, yeah? In this simulation, is the cycle time, does that include the time you're ready Yes. It does. Yeah. It does, yeah. And that's why you can control the, the whip limit in the, in the ready queue as well. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll get to that. So you guys made some changes that made sense to you, right? You reduce the whip limit drastically. You reduce, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the efforts on each card and still, you know, many defects. And uh, 
you know, th there was that, that button, the flash queues. And uh, the thing is, the, the important factor here to understand, you know, rela uh, kind of related to that question is that, you know, how much time does it take? Let's say that you, may do, uh, you change, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the effort, the average effort of the, uh, the user stories that you inject into your process. How long does it take for you to see the impact of that change? A long time, right? I mean, if, if your cycle time is 200 days, it's going to take, uh, take you 200 days to, uh, to actually feel that effect. You know, until then, you're going to get in you know, all those bugs, this flurry, flurry of, you know, bugs flowing back into your, your queue, right? So that's why, you know, uh, you know hitting actually the, the, that flash button, button actually made a lot of sense. And when you're a new project manager, actually, in real life, oftentimes you can ask for that and, you, uh, and people, you know, will let you, will, uh, will, uh, let you get away with that, right? Kind of, you know, reshuffle everything. Uh, that, that's something, uh, a privilege that, uh, that you don't get la later on. In this case, it made a lot of sense. Uh, so, you know, just people ask me, you know, can I, can, can I play that, you know, after the, you know, uh, later after the, that talk? And uh, yeah, there is an advanced version. That was kind of a trimmed down version. And uh, there's kind of, a, you know, an, an advanced exercise. If you guys are interested, we can actually do that, you know, maybe even within the conference. Uh, you know, maybe later today, later tomorrow, sometime. And where you can, you know, play with, I'm sorry, engineering improvements, so inject engineering improvements that actually improve different things, defects, you know, the length of regression, uh, expedites and uh, regression length, more or less lanes, how more people transfer them, that's definitely an option there. Uh, and you guys can definitely use it, you know, we use it to train teams and, uh, you know, with great, great success. You guys can use it, you know, ask me, we are, we are working on a facilitation guide, so you guys can ask me about it. Uh, you can also learn to build your own simulators, right? I mean, this, this is built on, uh, you know, my experience working with teams, but, you know, each team and its process has, has its own kind of idiosyncrasies. And if you guys have a different situation, different team that you want to, uh, to model and maybe use that actually as a kind of a decision support tool, then, you know, that's definitely a, a possibility. Uh, and feedback, right? That's a new tool, kind of, kind of in alpha mode, something we started fairly recently. So we are definitely thirsty for, uh, for input about, you know, new directions we, uh, you know, that make sense for us to take with that tool. So, so uh, just, you know, talk to me via Twitter, via my email, and uh, we'll, we'd love to hear from, from you. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you guys there, uh, you know, won the, uh, the prize, so come on over. And there are shirts there, you know, so I don't want to, uh, to take any one of them back, so please come and get some shirts.